Okay, so when you open up a new file in Blender, you get 2D animation, which is a template that you can use. So this works like regular Blender. You can hit control tab to be in whatever mode you want to be in, in case you're in object mode and you go into edit mode and oh no, how do I swap back and forth? You hit control tab, I got you buddy. If you use middle click, you can see that we're moving in 3D space, which might be disorienting. Luckily, pressing zero brings you right back. So the 2D animation template works the same way as the rest of Blender. We can go right here to output properties, which allows us to set the resolution. Maybe the frame rate, that seems really important. You might want to set like a custom one and make it like uh, 12 frames per second. That's usually the uh, standard. Rendering anything works the same way. You could go here, render image or render animation, whatever you want. This is how the template looks like. It starts you off with a black pencil. As you can see, if we use the pencil tool, it does have pressure sensitivity, even if when we zoom in and go into edit mode, it is entirely made out of vectors. Now, it is important to note that these vectors are not the same as these vectors. If you're the kind of person that likes the idea of exporting this as an FBX, then realize that if you export any of your drawings as an FBX or any other format, as far as I can tell, uh, it's not going to show up. So if you want to use the grease pencil tool, as far as I'm aware, it is exclusively in Blender. Now, the good part about this is that you can move it around like a 3D object. Even if I have ran into some weird niche issues, there's a lot of people that use this in 3D. We're not going to be doing that here, but I'll link a tutorial if you do want to jump into that. The pencil tool has pressure sensitivity, and if we use multiple strikes, we can see that it starts to create a shadow effect, but it does this weird overlapping thing, which I am not a fan of, so I don't use the pencil tool. I'm pretty sure that if you want to, you can make your own, but there are these other ones you can choose from. If you're curious, this is how all of them look in order. I like to use the pen tool because it looks the best, and for my purposes, this is the only tool that I use pretty much. Here are the options to play around with the strength and the radius of this thing. So if you want to make it just uh, very thin, if you want to make it uh, low opacity, here's where you can do all of that. I like to use the F button because it makes it way easier to pick the radius right off the bat. And you don't have to go in here and type a precise number if you don't want to. Okay, so now let's draw a line and try to erase it. If you use control, you can start erasing this. I'm not a huge fan of this type of eraser, but again, just like with the pencil, you can go ahead and select uh, any different option here. But you might also notice that if I go very slowly here, bam, you saw that? It, it made like a little cut here. If I go again, you might be able to see it. It's very choppy sometimes. Like that was a large erase that I didn't even make. And that's because if we go into edit mode, we can see the individual vertexes. And what it's doing is that it's erasing the closest vertex. So sometimes you might have really long points and if you hit the erase tool, it just cuts out a huge chunk that you might not have wanted. So uh, that sucks, but hey, if you go into edit mode, it is just like any other mode and you can go ahead and edit manually these vertices. Okay, so big question, how do we change the color? If you guessed this thing up here, you're wrong. If you guessed uh, any of these options over here, you're also wrong. So we are currently affecting this via materials. We can tell because over here, this thing is labeled material. So if we really want to change anything, we have to go down here to our materials. And you can see there are a couple of options you can use. If you have done anything with materials, you can probably figure out what all of these things do. Solid fill is probably the weirdest one because it creates an actual fill. You know, it tells you whether you want to control the stroke, whether you want to have a fill, whether you want a solid or a texture, and then what kind of texture you want, etc, etc. You can play with this for hours, alright? For now, I'm just going to have a stroke and a fill. Now, materials have a trade-off, which is that they are non-committal, so you can change this color at any time. The trade-off to this is that if you want a new material with a different color, well, you can't use this one, so you have to go here, make a new material, and then have this be whatever color you want. You can already see the downside if you are working with a large set of colors, which is where the other option comes in handy. So if we come back over here and we swap from the material tab to color attributes, we get the other side of the situation, which is that you can have uh, whatever color you want just really quickly. We already have a pre-existing palette here that we can uh, choose from and we can pick any color we want. And as you can see, it is so fast to swap colors. The downside here, is that as far as I know, 
once you draw something, once you have a certain color, you cannot change it. So that's kind of the trade-off. Do you want to have difficulty tweaking them afterwards, but a lot of variety and easy to pick from, or something that might be a little bit harder to pick from, especially if you have to scroll here, but the option to change colors whenever you want. I think this depends on your project, but it gives the option, so you do you. Now, regardless of whether you're in color attribute mode or material mode, if you want to fill in an object, regardless of whether or not you have the fill bucket, you have to use the solid fill. It will not work without this, and I wish it did. So if I click it, it fills up. If we use a single stroke, uh, it doesn't do that. In fact, it kind of just creates this weird outline in which nothing happens. So you got to be careful of that. Also, this is one you're probably going to notice that if you use the fill tool, it's going to eat a little bit into your stroke. That might not be what you want. It's definitely not what I want. And so here we can go into our strokes. As you can imagine, we use the fill to fill. And by doing that, we can see that it's no longer eating into our stroke layer. So while you can do it from up here and swap lines and fills, you can see that we already have this down here. So you don't have to go into this tab over here if you want to switch between lines and fills all the time. Honestly, the only reason why you ever want to go to this panel is maybe if you want to create a new layer. So for example, maybe this layer uh, controls the face specifically and then you know you can turn it on and off, you can lock it so you can't interact with this layer anymore. You can, uh, you can turn on masking, which I've never done. You probably might. And we can turn on or off onion skinning. I'm pretty sure you know what onion skinning is, but in case you don't, it's a way of seeing past frames while you're drawing. Let's demonstrate this by having a ball falling downwards. I can press the arrow key to go one frame forward or just move it around manually. So if I start drawing the next frame, we can see that the previous frame disappears. That's what onion skinning is. And as I continue the process, I can see the previous frame. Sometimes it might be helpful to do that, just in case you can see your object if you need to. Now to me, the onion skinning is a little bit too harsh, so I can lower the opacity. You can also specify a lot of other things here. I'm not going to cover all of this. I have not used half of these things. I'm not even sure you're going to use half of these things. Now you might have never worked with a timeline, that's understandable, and if you haven't, this timeline is a little bit weird. For example, let's say I want to move to the next frame, but I actually can't. It actually says that no more keyframes to jump in this direction, even though there clearly are. That is because we specifically have to give it a reference. So if I choose here, we can go one frame forward. And if you have a frame way over here, you don't really want to hit the right arrow key all the time. So you can hit the up or down arrow key to just immediately move onto the next frame, no matter how far it is. And I'm just going to assume that you have used the playback feature and know how to add and delete keyframes. And look, there's a lot of other things you can play around with. I guess the last thing I'll leave you on is the modifier tab. There are custom modifiers for the grease pencil tool. For example, you can create your own segments. You can, I don't know, you can play around with a strength if you want. What I use a lot is the noise tool because if we hit play, we can see that we can start manipulating the noise in strength and thickness. If we hit it with a noise scale, we can see that it starts to do a lot of things. This works really well if you don't want to animate every frame, but you want some kind of visual movement. This is great if you want to give a drawing or text a little bit of wobble without reanimating the entire thing. Just note that I found that some of these modifiers are laggier than 3D geometry. Take that as you will. All right, lastly, here's some weird issues that I ran into. If I go into edit mode and I make text bigger, it also makes the thickness bigger. You can fix that with a thickness modifier, but now, no matter what stroke you have, it will always be the same thickness. Sometimes you want to erase a certain section, but the eraser tool is not doing it for you. In which case, you can go to edit mode and select the right vertice that you want to delete. That works by changing this thing up here. This one selects the vertice, this one selects the entire stroke. So I often select the stroke I want, and then I go here for more precise options. I think that's about everything. Good luck.